The Cat Returns was my first Ghibli movie. I watched it on film for many, many years ago, and I was drawn into its soft world. I couldn't look away. It felt different. Thinking back, I knew it wasn't a Miyazaki. It was a follow-up to Whisper of the Heart, the first instance of Ghibli doing a sequel. I wondered after my video on Whisper if anyone was still talking about it. Not, not so much, but um, <laughs> the snaky A and B. This, uh, this is beautiful, and this is the reason I'm gonna make this video. Let's, let's go there. Project Cat started as a 20-minute short for an amusement park. The original author, Aoi Hiragi, wrote a treatment for the story. Miyazaki gave her three conditions. To include the curious antique shop, the baron who inhabits it, and who could forget Muta. If anyone, it would be the amusement park themselves, who later cancelled the project. It was not meant to be, yet from the old ashes reignited anew, as Ghibli needed new blood for their next generation. They resurrected Project Cat, turning it into a testing ground for young directors. Upon seeing Hirayuki Morita's storyboard, Suzuki's eyes lit up with a spark. This was no longer going to be a short, it was a full feature, a bona fide hit, and you, Morita, are going to direct it. So who was Morita? Well, he was a prestigious animator who directed the third episode of Golden Boy. <laughs> Need I say more? Well, Ghibli admired how he expressed himself during My Neighbor the Yamadas. His ideas were clear, and his characters striking, especially when it came to Haru whose down-to-earth attitude was the defining reason for Suzuki's decision. But Morita wasn't alone. Reiko Yoshida wrote the screenplay alongside him. She's best known for her work at Kyo... Oh yes, it's 2002. Tokyo Mew Mew. Together they'd expand on Hiragi's original draft. For Haru, their opening encapsulated her personality. Clumsy, energetic, the every girl, who's so late there's no time for tardy toast. Haru contrasts with the Miyazaki girls of late. She's not exceptional, with plenty of room to grow, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have a big heart. So I should be there in Even if her selflessness doesn't improve her luck, ensnaring her into the Cat Kingdom's ploy, lucky for her, the debonair dandy is at her service. The Baron is the perfect gentleman, whose skills are only outmatched by his own wit. Carrie Alwes's charisma and regal voice make him the perfect fit for the fairy tale picture. I think that one of the reasons why I was cast in this role was because I can do an aristocratic British voice. I am Baron Humbert von Gickingen. The artisan who created me gave me that title. But now I've matured, I can see that Muta is actually the best character. Larger than life with a soft center underneath his grumpy exterior. He can never say no to a meal, a true cat in that way. I always found Muta from Whisper of the Heart to be an authentic animated feline, true to life. No surprise since he was inspired by a real stray that struts around the studio as if she owns it. Going back to Cat Returns, it's worth mentioning that Peter Bohr's performance also really brings that character together. So why don't you do it, kid? You'll be set for life. Are you crazy? What? It might not be all that bad. My favorite Muta scene is when he jumps into the catnip jelly. Things weren't going great to begin with. Then Muta seems to be supposedly drowned because his eyes are much bigger than his stomach. No! I won't leave him! Then we'll bring him with us. And yet that they wheel him out to the engagement is both morbid and hilarious. Though Muta does look pudgier than his real-life counterpart, and his angles are slightly more jagged. Stylistically, Cat differs from Ghibli's in-house affairs. It's less rounded. Satoko Murikawa's character designs use flat color, clean digital lines with geometric shapes emphasized. Although that couldn't be said about the background, the art direction is in stark contrast to the figures. Soft, painterly landscapes fill the screen. 
taking hold of a limited colour palette. The entire film thrives on orange, yellow, green, with an offshoot of blues. Sometimes that palette is flipped, say for example in The Late Night, framing Haru and her mother in a kitchen discussion. You have the cool line work, Haru's hair down and deep blue hair. As they reminisce, it's so comfy and suffocates itself in charm. Haru herself is a bit of a style icon, with multiple outfits through the film, each using a different key colour in the palette, showing the film's attention to detail. Speaking of which, Yuji Nomi is back and returns bringing the biggest orchestra Ghibli has seen yet, jam-packed with 29 songs for its short length. A nostalgic and baroque sound encapsulates it, and while I prefer the style of Whisper of the Heart, there is no doubt that Cat has its peaks. The Cat King's Parade, magic awaits the dead of night before it appears. The opaque sound in the distance calls back a hundred years with each chime. The bamboo instruments mew as the cats line the street. It's a real standout. What about the waltz? The cats in blue. It starts with a solitary accordion before it transforms into something starry eyed. You really begin to believe the fantasy as you watch these situations. So it isn't just about the songs, but how they are introduced into the mix. The Cat Bureau uses an inaudible sound of the orchestra in the far distance, as if the songs have been whisked away. Because in the Bureau there is no outside influence, not even the wind. That is until the Baron erupts out of his shop, bringing his Baroque, heroic sound with it. Yet the height of sound design comes from the implementation of a certain theme. Looks like they're riding the wind. Follow those lights. Got it. As the Baron flies through the action, we hear the motif from Whisper of a Heart incorporated into the soundtrack. It only appears twice during the jump to the Cat Kingdom and after the adventure is over. The Baron signifies everything that Shizuku learnt, not to mention the origins of her own influence. You see, The Cat Returns is the finished novel of Shizuku. That was the author's original plan when she wrote the draft. Haru needs to follow a cat for an elongated back alley, all to find the Baron still in the same antique store. Different aspects of her school life were reinterpreted back into the story, including her fascination with fantasy and an elusive, dashing gentleman. Meow. It's fascinating to see how early concepts from Whisper take hold in their final form. Shall we? And off we go! What are all these chickens doing here? However, the visual language created for Whisper by Nohisa Anoi stands on top of the safe and comparison work in Cat Returns. Certainly, the movie isn't perfect. It starts to lose its steam at the two-thirds mark, tangled up in weak motives. The King is a one-note villain who admittedly is delightfully recreated by the devilish Tim Curry. Thanks a lot, babe. But this is a tale of mild peril at worst. A simple little fantasy that has all its bows tied neatly by the end. It isn't out to shock you, nor do I think it has to. Haru's lessons are about learning to express herself with vigour, taking responsibility for herself. And if you're going to learn from any cat, it might as well be the Baron. He's got it together more than most figurines that I know, personally. And on the contrary, what makes Cat's story special is that meta-narrative. That it is Shizuku's book, given to a first-time director, gives it that sort of authentic earnestness that the original film was all about. He did what was supposed to be done. It's a decent adaptation of what he was given, but follows closer than Whisper of the Heart ever did, expanding on when needed to, and rarely going off the rails until about the end, which has its own pros and cons. As a follow-up, it enriches the original, and even if its humble offerings won't be put next to the other Ghibli titans, it still became the highest grossing Japanese film that year. It was no failure. If you are a cat connoisseur like Haru, then you know where to find it.
As for Morita, I hope to see you again in the future someday. Next video will be on Paprika at the request of Daniel Strait on my Patreon requests. Thank you to Takayuki Suzuki and Joven and my other patrons. If you'd like to join them, you know where to go. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.